Crossover SUVs today are really popular. EVs are also getting more and more popular. So what about a crossover SUV EV? Well, today we're taking a look at the second gen Hyundai Kona. How does this fare? Let's check it out. Now, if you're thinking about trading in your car to buy a car like this Hyundai Kona EV, try selling it with Quotes instead. Quotes helps you sell your car quickly and easily. With the new Quotes door set, get a professional inspection by our certified mechanics at your convenience anywhere on the island. Quotes will then auction out your car online to its wide network of dealers to bid on your car. Once bidding is complete, Quotes will update you with their best offer price at no obligation. It's that easy. To find out more, visit quotes.com.sg. That's Q-U-O-T-Z.com.sg. Now, let's find out more about this Kona. The Hyundai Kona Electric is priced at $189,000. The electric motor produces 133 brake horsepower and 255 Nm of torque. The single-speed transmission brings the car from 0 to 100 km per hour in 9.9 .9 seconds. The 48.6 kWh battery has a drive range of 456 km. For more details on the Kona Electric or any other car, head on to sgcarmart.com to help you make the smart choice on your next car. Now starting off by the front, you might not believe that this is the second generation of the Kona because it's taken such a drastic redesign. In fact, this pixel line here looks really nice but it also kind of is more familiar with the Ionic 5, Ionic 6 line of vehicles. Now down here, you also have a cluster of lights. To me, very very vaguely resembles the one on the Santa Fe but the Santa Fe of course has a very nice linking LED light going through. Now down here, you get some pixels and this of course being an EV has no grill. In fact, you get this EV charging port in the front which actually I feel like is exactly the same shape as the one on the first generation Kona. Now this thing takes up to 350 kilowatts DC fast charging and supports V2L with a little adapter that you can plug in if you want to power your things outside, let's say you're camping. Now let's check out the side. Now over by the side, this car does come in two trims. You get the base trim as well as the sunroof trim. This is the sunroof option. Now the wheels, they're not my snazziest pick, but I believe they do have some aerodynamic function. As with most EVs, to make them a little bit more aerodynamic, gives you better range, better efficiency. Now if you move down the side, it's a very typical crossover profile. And there's this little silver trim that reminds me of its far distant cousin, the Kia EV6. Now onto the rear. Now the pixel design continues to the rear with its single line tail light. Very nice touch. Pixel designs here for the EV variant and then your signal cluster here. Now in the sunroof trim, you're going to get power tailgate in this segment. Yes, power tailgate opens up to 466 litres worth of boot space, extendable to 1,400 if you knock down the rear seat. Parcel shelf and then uh, cargo netting for you to hold down your stuff. Variable boot floor as well as tyre mobility kit and V2L adapter for you to plug in front if you want to power your devices. Now, this this passed the anti-trolley length test for a crossover SUV. Let's find out. This will actually not pass the anti-trolley length test, not by a long shot, but fear not, still plenty of cargo space for you to haul family, stuff, things, all your basic needs, as well as hooks here for grocery, stuff powering your food. Really, really useful. Now, let's check out the rear. Now over in the rear of the Hyundai Kona EV, this is my head space, my leg space, comfortable driving position. I am 1.75 meters tall, there is still plenty of space and keep in mind, the battery is down below. And this is in fact not using the eGMP platform, so I think for that, it is surprising amounts of space. In terms of amenities, dome light here, hook handles here, um, the door is nicely finished, though it is plasticky, uh, there is a little bit of soft touch material. I like the contrast of the grey interior. It gives it a little bit more, it feels more spacious compared to an all black fabric. Uh, you get rear aircon, which is really important in Singapore's weather. And I think the piece de resistance is three pin plug right inside the cabin. I would, if I had this car, right, I would just like drive anywhere. If I'm picking up my kid, waiting for her to finish her swimming lessons or whatever, I could just sit behind. Run the aircon because you're not running an engine, you, you can run your aircon with an EV. Plug in my laptop here 
and then just do my work, watch my shows, or even play my Switch. There's just so many possibilities with an EV with an inside the cabin 3-pin plug. Now, moving on to the rest of the cabin, you get USB-C fast charging right here. Flat boot floor, I mean, it is a little bit raised because of its battery. And then over in the middle is an armrest with two cup holders, so you can rest easy, sit, sit really comfortably. Now, if there's nobody in the middle, you can move on over, just scooch really easily, flat boot floor again, and then just sit in the middle. It's going to be a little bit of a squeeze for its compact crossover size, but honestly, not complaining. I'm still getting a little bit of headspace at 1.75 meters tall. Legs are really comfortable. They're not like squeezing all over the place. Um, big feet still manage to squeeze, squeeze here comfortably. I think really well done. Now, let's check out the front. Now over by the front of the Hyundai Kona EV, things are a lot nicer, a lot more refined if you compare it to the previous generation. I believe Hyundai has gone leaps and bounds since then. So right here is your dual 12.3 inch infotainment displays as well as your instrument cluster. It's a very kind of normal treatment for Hyundai now, like your Ionic 5, Ionic 6. Very sharp display, very nice, uh, nicely done UI UX. Heads up display here in the sunroof trim, heads up uh, also sunroof here, of course in the sunroof trim you get the sunroof and ventilated seats, those are I believe the main ones, you also get a nicer display, but other than that, the rest of the cabin is still really nicely made, like check out this brush material for your centre console right here, I like that they haven't gone all full digital, you still get plenty of buttons right here, control your infotainment, your aircon and then your charging system, right here you have a USB-C and I like that there's this button to select between USB-C just charging and data or just charging. In addition to that, you still have another USB-C port right here, USB-C uh, wireless fast charging and then a 12 volt charger right here. Move on down is even more controls which I really like, so dedicated button for your camera system. You can check out the camera, what's behind you, what's around you. You get heated and ventilated seats, drive mode selector so you get eco normal sport as well as snow and then brake auto hold because this has an electronic parking brake so things plenty of things stuffed inside here auto dimming rear view mirror sunroof of course that you can open with a touch in this segment uh, get an armrest sorry you get an armrest right here then you can open up lots of dividers very customizable and your large large center console space here that you can that also comes with hideaway cup holders so it's enough for my coffee and my water and still plenty of space right here to put even more things. Now, materials, colour, texture, I think they've done a really good job with the design of this cabin. If you're looking at competitors, I think this really pushes this ahead of the curve. And that's what Hyundai is doing. That's what I like. It really does make you feel like you're driving a next-gen machine. And does this car drive as well as it looks? One way to find out. So driving the Kona EV, what does it feel like? Well, the sunroof trim, you wouldn't know that this is a Cat A model. You wouldn't feel like it's a Cat A model. It makes you forget that it's a Cat A model so easily. Because mainly the power with 255 newton meters of torque, it just kicks on tap easily and there's the drive mode selector. So for some reason, if you feel like it's not fast enough, you can switch over into sport mode and then you can just get even faster. Well, a faster pedal response. There's also pedal shifters that let you select the regenerative braking, but not so much in the conventional sense. But really, 255 Newton meters of torque, 0 to 109.9. .9. Even though it's a Cat A model with just 133 brake horsepower, it doesn't feel like a Cat A model at all. And I think that's great for a daily runabout, and especially in its EV configuration with its singular gear, you really don't feel like it's a Cat A model. So, uh, if you switch over drive mode, I like that there's the physical drive mode not going through the menu, so you can switch over to Eco. It's really easy, it's really peaceful. I think you could give this car to your grandmother-in-law and they wouldn't complain like, oh, it's too fast. Yet, when you want for some more spirited driving, the power is there. Zero to 100 day to day. Perfect. It's a really, really suitable Cat A runabout. 
Now, in terms of handling, this Kona EV will surprise you as well. I guess because of EV crossover SUV kind of distribution, it can take some surprising punishment. Put it into curves at high speed, it will surprise you with the amount of grip and feedback that you're getting. It's not, it's not a race car, but still, for a day-to-day -day runabout, it's kind of like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, it goes, it can be your day daily quiet drive, yet it can also take some interesting curves at speeds, theoretically. Yet, when you go over humps, I've noticed like when you go over humps inside the car parks, this thing is really, really pleasant. It soaks it up really well and kind of just mellows out everything and then it just gives you a really pleasant overall drive. So, the handling on this, the suspension setup, it's great. In terms of noise, you do hear a little bit of the road noise, just a tiny little bit. I think when you have your entertainment on, you won't notice the road noise. What you're probably going to notice, however, is a little bit of traffic noise coming in. But I think that's very forgivable, especially when you're thinking of a segment. Right here, I think it's doable. Now, because of its size, it's also really compact, really easy to park, really easy to navigate around cities. No problem inside this corner. And all of the ADAS that they've stuffed inside here, driving island to island is, bree is a breeze. Yesterday, I was out running some errands with this, uh, going all the way to Jurong, going back, Clementi, Shun, all the way, just go on the highway really easily, turn on level 2 self-driving, so active cruise control, lane keeping assist, and you, know, you keep your hands on the wheel, but it's really, really convenient. So, you're not going to get fatigued. Even if you do get fatigued, they even have the driver attention warning. So, kind of everything is sorted out for you. And that's the thing about Hyundai, like if you go even uh, when I bought my Avante a few years back, I was considering the between the base trim and the elite trim and there was about a $10,000 difference if I recall. But I noticed that even in the base trim, you're going to get all the safety features. So it kind of made less value sense to get the high trim. High trim, you're going to get things like sunroof, ventilated seats, which is the same inside here. This one, the Kona, you're going to get heads-up display as well in the top trim. But this is something that I kind of applaud Hyundai for, that they say that, well, this is what they told me, that they don't want to cut back on things like safety. So even if you're going for the base trim, all the ADAS you need, it's all there. Link keeping, blind spot, active cruise control, which is fantastic. So even if you're getting the base model, it's not that base, it's not that bare. Now, in terms of battery, if you look at similar segments, um, this kind of underperform underperforms a little bit. And I think it's kind of exacerbated by the fact that it's so ready with its energy. So it kind of makes me play with it a little more. And I think that kind of makes the performance of, of the longevity of the range a little bit worse. I've been, I have clocked some from 100%, I've clocked some 170 kilometers right here. Uh, the range is showing me another 127 to go. So I think if you're doing every single time I've been driving this, I've switched it into sport mode just for that a little bit more fun. But I think if you're driving day-to-day -day, uh, eco, I'm pretty sure you can get 400 easy. But that also brings me to the size of the battery. If you look at its competitors, this does come in a little bit short. But for 400 kilometers or 300 plus, if you're like a heavy footer like me, I think that's very doable, it's very acceptable. And because of its architecture, if you do find a fast charger, this thing can go up to 350 kilowatts DC fast charging. I don't think there's one in Singapore yet, but Hyundai, that's how they future-proof this car. So if you find one, charging is not going to be an issue at all. Now, when it comes to competition, I think, unfortunately, when it was launched in 2019, a few years back, its EV back then was a lot more in a lot in an environment that was a lot more forgiving. Today, this goes up against some tough, tough competition. Now we're looking at this thing is going for about 180,000 Kona EV, and if we're looking purely at EVs and the kind of crossover SUV hatchback segment. Let's straight to it. 
currently one of the cheapest on the market is the Ion Y and that goes for some 140,000. Uh, you have the Atto 3, you have Cat A if you're considering. Let's look at Cat A purely. You have the Atto 3, you have the MGZS, you have the MG4. And all of these are quite a significant amount cheaper than some 180,000. So that really, and I have to say that Hyundai has really spruced up this interior. It feels futuristic. I love the UI. It almost makes me think of Starfield, the way it's designed, not the game, not so much the gameplay, but the design. It looks cool. It looks futuristic. The dash, the refresh rate is really high. Things look really sharp. This display is beautiful. This interior is beautiful. You have fabric here. It feels soft. It feels refined. It feels up to market for its segment. I think when you bring it to some of the competitors, especially uh, on the lower end, that's some of the things that they have to give up to make the car cheaper. With this, you get refinement, you get uh, this upmarket feel, but is it worth 20,000? Is it worth 30,000 worth of a price difference? That is, That may be a hard pill to swallow for many people, I suspect. Now, on the other hand, it's not just competition from the cheaper side of the market. I think Hyundai has made it tough on themselves because on the other end, on the more expensive end, you top up just 10,000, top up just 20,000. You could go for an Ionic 5 or an Ionic 6 rear wheel drive Cat A. So I think that's from Hyundai themselves. So they've put themselves in kind of a tough spot. I like this car. It's really giving me very usable day to day, yet a little bit sporty. I really like it, looks fantastic. It feels good on the inside. It's tacked up. You have your ADAS, heads up display, uh, ventilated seats, all the trimmings but they've priced themselves a little bit competitive, a little bit too toughly. So for this, if you ask me, is this car will buy, won't buy, or go try? This car, for me, even though as much as I like it, I think because of its price and its competition, this car has got to be a go try. So go try it, see if you like the size, see if you like the design, see if you like the interior fittings, because I do think that this this brings a very unique, very, a very wantable product to the market. And it may not be for everybody because of the price and the competition, but it's still a really good product. So that's it for our review of the Hyundai Kona EV. What do you think? Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with us? Let us know down in the comments below, as well as any other car that you'd like to see us try out. Do leave it in the comments. Any questions about this car? Any questions about the features, about the trims? You can leave it in the comments. I'll read pretty much every single one of these. Now, if you've made it this far, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to us. Hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And lastly, do follow us on TikTok. We are at SGKama. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna get this little pixel designs down here. You're also gonna get, get, get rah. Are you picking that up? Yeah. Oh really? To find out what, because she would lick and I would lick and we would lick together in the middle of the night, licking one another.